fantastic. Hi, very good afternoon to everybody. Hi, hi, hi. What a way to start a week. Yay. It's only Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, only but Monday. It's only Monday, but hey, you know, this is the best way to start a week, right? To meet a new employer. This is good. Yay. So welcome, welcome to the, the second episode of Employer Interviews with Infineon. I'm so happy we finally put a face to a name, and that's Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Kong Fa Choi. Kong Fa Chai. So wow. nice to meet all of you. So thank you so much for inviting me, Eileen. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you, Sharon, you are so prepared. <laughs> I even forgotten my oranges. Where's my oranges? Uh, <laughs> New, Year New Year goodie with me. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. And, um, just want to be want to thank you for spending time in fact your lunch hour with us and also welcome everyone who have just logged in to join us can't tell you how happy i am to see all of you here because this is indeed a, a, a rare opportunity to get to know the hr directly from the employer organization so there you have it a face to a name and we're going to be learning quite a few things here on this episode um, we're going to be looking at some of the contract and permanent roles that Infineon has and um, I think Sharon has some good news for us as well there, there seem to be more roles being added um, which is also going to be giving you a sneak peek into the onboarding process you know what get an idea of the work culture and also some interview tips. In fact, I think once you get Sharon started, probably she, she might find it very difficult to stop. <laughs> so, um, I wash the time. <laughs> I wash the time, Maybe, for no worries, sure. No worries. We don't want you to stop, Sharon. <laughs> okay, so my question is, did you get the cup or did you get the cuppa? Because someone did. And that's Po Chuan, all right? So Po Chuan actually called in very early and then he earned himself the cup, yes. And did you know that this is only exclusive to new employees of Infineon? And who do we have logging in so early? If I can say, even earlier than Sharon. <laughs> and who do we have? We have Edwin P. So congratulations, Edwin. I will say you win a cup. Sharon, do you have the cup? Yes, yes, I do. I prepared some uh, additional ones. So we'll get a, a quiz or a little, yeah, a short quiz at the end of the session so that to see the SCP attention and they'll get, you know, my lovable cups after that. Uh. So, okay, la, we'll uh, tell one, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I win what you should do is, you know, you should also get a meeting with them. Ah, that's what Pochuan did. So that's very good. Yay. So okay, that's when nice. Is it? When is it? When is it? Uh, I think we'll give you the email and then mm. you can email and arrange from there. Yep, pick it up from us, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's very great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, congratulations, Edwin. See, okay. early bird. <laughs> early bird <laughs> catches <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, come here. Wow, okay, very nice. All right. So, hi, everyone. I'm Eileen. I'm the founder of The Art of Career. I'm also an organizational psychologist. All of you should... Should know me by now. Wow, like so yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's not that. It's just a formality. All right. So um a lot of what you're gonna be seeing here actually brings to life how you can make yourself visible to potential employers. This is the new age. So the more you learn to do this, the more you are actually having good control of your job search journey. So I do encourage you, come up and then show yourself and be visible, be spotted by the employer. So as we are continuing on, I want to encourage everyone to type in the chat, what sort of roles will you be keen in so that, you know, Sharon as well as her team can actually share with us um, and, and maybe find a match as well. I mean, this is really a rare occasion where, you know, you make yourself visible and then HR sees you and HR also get to know the kind of roles that you either have been doing previously, currently, or aiming to do. And you have also heard me questioning, not questioning, uh, basically asking Sean whether he's, he's open to bringing people, you know, from other adjacent industry. And he says he is. So, wow, how cool is that, right? 
Okay, so I'm going to pass the floor to Sharon because she has prepared a lot of material for us. And so um, take it away, Sharon. Maybe what Thank I'll you so much. Mm, I'll stop share. Okay, thanks, Celine. Thank you so much. And again, warm welcome to all of you. Um, Gong Fa Choi, Gong Si Fa Tai to all of you here. So wishing you guys Hong Yun Dang Tong Ah Xi Shang Mei Shang Mei Shao Gen Shang Yi Cheng Lou. I hope that's yeah. good for everyone. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah. So today, um, I'm very pleased to uh, be here as part of the. Uh, you know, speaker, very privileged, in fact, and uh, very excited to share, you know, uh, what I've gone through myself personally. So for a start, um, I will actually invite Sean, uh, my manager, to kind of run through a quick video for us to share about Infineon. Mm. So Sean, would you like to share your screen first? That's very nice. That's something we promised, right, Sean? And Sean is hiding in the background. Yes. So Sean, you have to share your video so that we can kickstart this, you know, session. Yes. Hi, welcome to Infineon. I'm Phoebe and I'm your tour guide for today. Come on in. This is our campus and where our new colleagues will join us as part of the Infineon family. The whole floor is dedicated to workshops, trainings, all hands meetings and events. With the extensive development opportunities available to our employees, Infineon is a great place to kickstart your career as a budding engineer. And who knows, you might even get to visit one of our overseas locations, like our headquarters in Munich, Germany. If you aspire to be in R&D, you will work with some of the best minds and state-of-the-art tools here. Today, we are giving you an exclusive access to the Development Center the heart of our R&D activities here at Infineon. Let's go! This is one of our meeting rooms at the Development Center and one of my favorites, the Future at Work room. This is where innovative and revolutionary ideas are being born, where our engineers are busy shaping and inspiring the future. Every day, we're looking for ways to make life easier, safer and greener. Our R&D activities focus on mobility, energy efficiency, and security, from developing microcontrollers for safe autonomous driving, power supply controllers that deliver high usage efficiency, and authentication controllers to ensure the products you buy are genuine. A typical project in a development center begins after the business case and the system concept have been decided. The project kicks off with a design and layout. This stage covers design entry, functional simulation, design optimization, to physical implementation. Designing a chip is comparable to city planning. Engineers are working on 3D designs that contain multiple layers of connections. We utilize AI to accelerate and optimize this design process and predict routing and floor planning congestions. But there are also other constraints that our engineers need to tackle, such as short channel effects, and gate leakages. Keeping up with the latest design concepts and trends is also a crucial part of the job. But for our design engineer, Philip Lim, the challenges are worth it when he gets to see his design creations come alive, knowing his efforts have contributed to everyday products that improve the quality of life. After the chip design is finalized, what follows is the system on chip verification. Before the chip design can be taped out, all the hardware components need to be checked to ensure full functionality and optimal performance and meet compliance standards for functional safety and cybersecurity. This verification process is done with an array of powerful electronic design automation tools from Cadence and Synosis Suites. Big data and machine learning also play an important part in increasing the speed of testing. It's exciting for Duan Tuan An, design engineer, to be at the forefront of his field, working with the latest technology and methods that many companies have yet to adopt and apply. Some of these include emulator and PSS, portable test and stimulus standard. Sometime after the chip design is taped up to a semiconductor foundry, the foundry sends us an engineering sample in the form of a wafer. Now it's time to find out if the product works according to a design. Testing takes place in our R&D test labs. Our engineers develop complex test programs and test cases for chip debugging. What you see here 
is our automatic testing platform created specifically for TV, PC, adapter, and charger projects. The chip undergoes a temperature stress test inside this chamber. Validating chip robustness is essential to ensure that any defects are identified and to prevent unwanted surprise manufacturing costs. For Sien Yohan, application engineer, the process of finding new methods to increase test coverage is one of his favorite parts of the job. Not only does it increase manual work, it also speeds up the project time, bringing us one step closer to production. We have one more place to show you, but this place requires something special. Okay, we're now all ready to go into the clean room. Let's go! Here, we have a whole range of highly advanced and leading-edge machines that can test multiple products for electrical, mechanical, and thermal characteristics in parallel. Take this V93K tester, for example. The tester runs numerous rounds of testing to reject defect, reliability drift, and out-of-specification products. As part of the testing process, our test engineers are also developing C++ test methods and customized tools with Python, Java, c -sharp scripts, and Tableau to analyze test data. Once the chip shows peak performance and yield, the product can finally be released for full production. Reaching the stage is a huge accomplishment and motivates our engineers through each step in the development process. Of course, it doesn't just stop at development and production. We need to connect our products to customers, and this is where the system application engineering team comes in. The team takes their understanding of market needs, customer requirements, and system cost performance to present the right products with the right features for specific customer application. In this case, it is a battery management system for electric vehicles. Our microcontrollers not only ensure safe battery charging, but also optimize the lifespan and performance of car batteries. By prolonging the battery life, we can conserve the Earth's precious resources and reduce the burden on the environment. Together with our customers, we create efficient car batteries for electric vehicles that contribute to a greener environment. You've seen our labs in our workspace, but our engineers can even apply their ideas in a real environment in our very own office. It's a playground for experimentation and part of the strong innovation culture we have here. This is our cafeteria, where we have a smart radar sensor system installed at our entrances. Our cafeteria, along with our other office spaces, provides a living development environment for us to test and enhance the performance of our works in progress. As we walk in, you'll notice this display with a go and stop sign. This is all connected to a radar right above the entranceway that detects and counts people as they enter and leave the cafeteria via the two entrances. The information is sent to a dashboard that can be viewed on a device such as your phone. Our R&D team built this system to automate crowd management and key places like restaurants, stores, theaters, and meeting rooms safe. And we've come to the last part of our tour. This is our co-innovation space and the first of its kind for Infineon worldwide. We partner with startups to offer our expertise in semiconductors and co-create products. We also provide startups with training and guidance in design thinking, business innovation, and connections within and outside Infineon. The interactions with startups also give our engineers opportunities to build up their system knowledge and experience. So you've seen what we do here at Infineon to make life easier, safer, and greener. We're always looking for like-minded individuals who share our aspirations to join us. So thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Wow. Wow. So nice. Yes, only, that's a nice video. Yes. Yeah, I can only think about, you know, the love letters during Chinese New Year because it's <laughs> so terrible. Okay, okay. On serious note, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thanks, Sean. And thank you so much, everyone, for paying a little bit of attention to this video we created for our recent SSIA Singapore Semiconductor Industry uh, Association, Association uh, Career Fair. And I think this video kind of gives you a very good overview of uh, who Infineon is or who, uh, what, what we do, uh, because a lot of our products uh, are hidden in, you know, like your mouse or your laptop or, you know, um, some of even your EasyLink card. So you probably don't know us because you're not really a consumer brand. Yep. So good to showcase this video and I'll start so I'll share my screen uh, and Eileen just let me know if you can see it or uh, okay so hang on yeah mm, hang on let me try sharing again 
Okay. Hang on. All right. Is it loading? Yes, yes, yes. It okay. is. I can see it. Okay, Jolly good. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Sharon, uh, and again, very happy to and privileged to be here. So I hit the talent network team for ASEAN Emerging Markets uh, at Infineon. And actually, I started my very first career uh, as a customer support engineer in ST Micro. That was really, you know, years back. And I jumped into recruiting sales uh, because on the job at it states, you know, traveling required. And then I was then in a startup for eight years. Um, after which I moved into in-house recruiting because I wanted to see a different perspective and join a consumer electronics industry. And uh, actually my last role was in the software industry. So I was in SAP and I was covering Southeast Asia recruiting for four years moving, before moving to be an APJ for PMO. And I progressed into a global programs manager. So I was there uh, for a total of 12 years. Yeah. And um, again, uh, I would say SAP and Infineon are very similar. Uh, uh, it's a very nurturing place. So um, I am a trained solution focused coach. Um, I'm also a mindfulness advocate and practitioner, which I think it helps me to retain a lot of sanity in my day to day. <laughs> um, and at times, I like to also wear the devil's hat if you ask on and challenge status quo because I believe in betterment and improvement. And of course, um, uh, as part of my vocation and my passion, I like to do a bit of career coaching, you know, on the side, uh, just to support uh, employees or, um, you know, friends or contacts around, around me. Yep. So importantly, I believe in paying forward too. So passionate about recruiting, as you can hear from my <laughs> history of my job history. And uh, of course, there are some good hobbies uh, that I uh, do on my free time, which is listen to podcasts or tech talks. I think those helps to also uh, constantly increase uh, a little bit of uh, knowledge about um, um, not just recruiting HR, but also about the business. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. Lovely. Thank you. So I'll uh, move on. So Ifinio is actually a world leader in Semicon. Uh, so for most of you who may not be aware or may be aware, and we are top 10, uh, of course, uh, um, in, the, uh, in this industry itself. So our vision is really to link between the real and digital world. And of course, uh, Infino, we believe in our core values. And uh, the mission, as I mentioned by our CS, our uh, MD to this morning was also to, again, to make life easier, safer, and greener. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Infineon itself, uh, we are actually divide, uh, cut across uh, four key value streams, which spend, uh, there's four different industries. So, we call it four line of business. So, mainly with automotive, industrial power controls, power systems and sensors, and connected secure systems. So um, as you can see in, in each of this uh, portfolio, um, it matches across the verticals and we have been actually recognized as number one. So we are number one in automotive. So which means that uh, automotive, uh, you know, car makers like uh, Volkswagen, they are also one of our biggest customers or even uh, Audi and so forth. They use our chips in their uh, driverless car and so forth. Yeah. And of course, uh, PSS, which is our power system and sensors, our next well-known line of business as well. I mean, many people are actually unaware that uh, Infineon chips actually go into our EasyLink card. Um, handheld thermometers, which is um, the one that you see sometimes um, in at, uh, where they decide pharmacy. And of course, uh, Dyson fans, vacuum cleaners are just some of those that um, I can think about. Yeah. And why oh. is this very important? Yes, because mm -hmm. our strategy is targeted at creating value for our customers, uh, society and shareholders. And for us to support this strategy, we need to understand what we do and constantly ask ourselves, how can we do it better? Yeah, and as a whole, we, uh, of course, in Finale, we, we, didn't, we need to hold the leadership agility in order to scale up the technology advance and to bring us to the level that we like to be. So can I ask you, Sharon, so what sure. it means is, um, based on those openings and the open positions, it will sit into one of the four uh, lines yes, of business. Yes, line business, previous, exactly. Yeah, line, right? Exactly. So that's why you will see that. Can, um, can I see again? Can I see? Uh, the previous slide is there? <laughs> yeah, this is the one. Oh, I see, I see. So mm. it will sit into one of one of these, like automotive. Yes, exactly. So um, automotive means that our is uh, producing the chips for the automotive business. Right, right. Uh, so our chips is going to industrial power and controls, like more like you know satellite and uh, storage transmission generators and mm -hmm. big generators for uh, mainly for the industrial mm -hmm. areas, industrial segment. Yep. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. right. So um, for many who may not know us, <laughs> I don't know because 
<laughs> if you know, actually set foot in Singapore in 1970. So we were actually known as semi, uh, Siemens Components then. And I think it was in all those factory factories along Kalang. So in the 1980s, we were still focusing on assembly uh, and testing of integrated circuits. By the late 1990s, um, we set up a distribution center in Asia Pack and further reinforce the global investments uh, Infino Headquarters has committed to Singapore government. And today we are pioneering the Smart Factory initiative at our Kalang sector office. Uh, in fact, Infino uh, Headquarters um, in Singapore, we are the largest test and assembly plant uh, outside Munich and second largest R&D center as well. So you'll see that a lot of, quite a lot of R&D roles uh, here, uh, which I would say not many semiconductors players will have it in Singapore, but we had it. And of course, with Industry 4.0, uh, we are also looking to embark on our digital transformation journey. In fact, today we just kickstart our, uh, we call it Arise project. So if you do come to our office facilities, you see a lot of Arise, um, uh, you know, stickers and a lot of interesting, um, even posters uh, to encourage employees to take on this journey or embark on this journey with us. I yep. see. So Infineon is not new to Singapore. It's been here for many years, right? I, I remember the name. It's yes. Kel, probably yes. eight years ago, but uh could is is actually longer than that. Yes, yes. Um I think when we were known as Siemens Components, maybe I think the older generation, some people would may have heard of us, but uh, I think now if you pass by PIE, yep, it's a very uh, <laughs> iconic white color yes. building. Which I'm in, in now, uh, with like a bit like cruise ship. Yeah, so that is the iconic building. It's quite unique. A lot of people tell me so. Yeah, it so is? that. Yes, yes. So Hing Sikit was here, uh, you know, DPM went to Mr. Hing Sikit was here to, you know, uh, actually uh, commission and he was here to actually, uh, when we celebrated our 50th anniversary, he was here to uh, actually uh, count grace ceremony for us. Lah. Yep. Okay, so um, hang on. I think I have to page up a bit. Hang on, I missed one page of the previous. Oh, okay, okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, over here, um, okay, Infineon. Okay, I think I missed. Okay, never mind. So we are we are having actually having regional headquarters in Singapore, as you guys are, can imagine, and it comprises of of course a lot of different function, be it our R and D, uh, which is our development center, our test assembly plants, uh, which is our OSAT, and of course we have uh, IT sales and marketing, uh, distribution, warehousing, uh, central function, that even quality procurement, finance, uh, and so forth. So um, we house about two thousand two hundred employees. Uh, uh, in Singapore, and, uh, and we're still expanding, to be honest. Uh, in fact, recently, due to the acquisition of Cyprus, uh, the, our, hit, our total headcount has gone up quite a bit. So as we turn 50th anniversary, uh, in fact, that was 2020, uh, 2020 last year. So this is 51, yeah? Um, we have been really doing our part to engage our staff because uh, 2020 is a very difficult year for the whole world. I think it's universal, right? everywhere you are facing mm, yeah. the crunch, right? And Infineon did not stop to make an additional effort to bring everyone together. And uh, for that, we had, uh, 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 even for myself as a newbie then, a new hire then, I actually went through, um, it was a little bit challenging, I would say, because I was onboarded virtually, but still mm. we had a lot of chance to connect uh, with our colleagues uh, virtually, which I have, in fact, some of them have not met at all because we are still on team one, team two, we are swapping weeks to come to office, yep. So we had a lot of uh, different festivals to, or festivities to uh, celebrate a special milestone. Uh, for example, last year we had the digital cookbook uh, contributed by the employees. Uh, we had radio dedication for lunch hour. Uh, we had um, a food bento celebration because of the different, uh, you know, diversity days. And then we had quizzes and so forth. So, uh, so, so Infina really is making effort uh, to bring employees together and get connected uh, despite of COVID-19. So I think that was something uh, very heartwarming for, for a new hire, you know, at that point in time. Mm. Okay, so, um, and as you can see, we are very proud to tell you that through our pandemic times, uh, our management uh, uh, really emerged as employer of choice, who yeah. truly cares and places the people first. So through all the safety measures and all the various virtual activities, uh, we uh, it has truly made an impact, I would say, and mm -hmm. provided the space and flexibility uh, employees needed to make it easier for them to get through such a trying times. And uh, uh, so in a way, I would say thumbs up. And it's a, uh, you know, it's really a place that honor uh, wellness and uh, work-life integration. So we had a lot of activities as well. We said, I remember at Zumba, uh, uh, which I love, 
<laughs> virtual yoga, uh, which we, we would have done it, you know, in our office uh, premises uh, on regular times. But now because of COVID, we had no choice but to take it offline. So these are little things that the company has done to, that I think mm, small gesture, but it, it goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah it really goes. A, yes, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I mean, it really matters because, you know, this is something that most employees or potential ones always worry because you know we are mm. working from home so what's the difference from from onboarding from home and also onboarding in the office and what i hear is you try to make it as seamless as possible and not lose the frequency of engagement which is nice That's yes cool. yes yes sorry uh, shall you see something or someone see something? Oh, okay all right so i just moved on yeah so um, I, when Ili asked me to, you know, present uh, something about organization, I then I told her that, you know, maybe I can, you know, share my personal new high experience uh, because I was, uh, in fact, interviewed during when COVID first started. <laughs> okay. Oh. And yeah, and I still remember I couldn't come to the uh, office at all. Um, and uh, only I think the final round, then they had to apply for permission for me to bring me in and meet uh, my manager, Sean, and our, our HR leaders. So I just want to share a little bit about my new high experience because partly this experience will then maybe uh, impact you as a as an attendee yeah. today, and um, it will also kind of showcase uh, what does uh, what the sharing experience you know because uh, yeah. virtually onboarding I must say has been quite challenging, <laughs> yep. yeah. So uh, all in all, because it's, it's been almost a year, so as I reflect back, I would say that it has been a great candidate experience. Uh, why? Because I felt really warm. And uh, Infineon uh, is a place that's full of, uh, that makes you feel like it's, it's a very hard landing, in you know, a hard lander place. Like, you know, everyone I see, it feels like uh, it could be like a, a long lost, like a long, long friend, you know, uh, and really, no I kidding. Too. yeah, it, it feels like um, people are very uh, authentic and sincere to help and very collaborative environment. Um, and Especially for the first three months, I really couldn't you know, navigate the systems or the process or you know so forth. So the, uh, the colleagues were really super helpful in that sense. Um, and um, there was seamless onboarding that's done from both the organization, the high level, as well as the functional mm. team. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm receiving the C-suite kind of orientation, which is like, wow, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So for three weeks, I was very engaged, you know. And um, there's structural processes, of course, because we are a big organization uh, and there's also some systems that is very feasible, I mean, working. But of course, there's still some complexity because we are a matrix organization and as I mentioned it's an organization that cares because um, it, they will do little things that goes a long way right uh, for example we have a fruit cup per week because we want to encourage a healthy living uh, we had a running club, you know, virtually, if you like to run, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, amongst the employees as well. And then of course, the Zumba, yoga, I think we're going to have a piloxing quite soon, uh, also virtually at the moment. Um, and um, there's uh, the good part is about Infineon is that I think they really promote internal mobility and progression, meaning that uh, I see there's a lot of employees who have worked for many years and move up or move across different verticals or different industry fun different function. And um, so, and they really promote uh, local um, talents. Uh, mm. So I was quite surprised because if you're not being a German organization, I mean, headquarters in yeah. uh, Germany, I really thought that I could see a lot of German as, you know, leaders, but surprisingly, no. Uh, all our management, in fact, almost every one of them is a, is a Singaporean. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So that's impressive for me. I'm like, impressive. wow, okay. Yes. Not easy, not easy. I've worked in so many M I mean, different MNCs and I know You'll it's be Exactly. Yep. And uh, of course, uh, today I'm very uh, blessed that I, I do enjoy work life integration <laughs> with a, little bit of, like, a lot of flexibility. Um, and um, what also impresses me is it, it has a very deep learning culture, which I, I think uh, I'm very. Uh, very, you know, leaning in for that because uh, yeah. we know learning is constant, right? Yeah, and uh, we talk about lifelong learning all the time. So all of us as employees have free LinkedIn learning license, so you can learn anytime, anywhere, uh, anyhow, you know? So that was the um, something that I felt was very, I'm very grateful for because the LinkedIn learning license is not cheap, yeah? And of course, yes, um, 
we, we value a lot of loyalty and talent. I think there's something uh, as a TN person, I really uh, advocate that because uh, we try our best to bring the best talent to the organization. And of course, not to, you know, bring you in and just let you, you know, work in their role or function for about one to three years and that's it. But we also want to nurture you and grow you into or groom you to the next level or next role that you, you think you're suitable for. So, um, so all in all, I think the, it has been an awesome experience, uh, honestly, because um, uh, especially when I had... I couldn't meet my colleagues or managers uh, for, for from day one till almost like six months. Then finally, I, wow. I get to see them. Like, okay. So, you know, this chemistry that I had to build uh, and the trust I built was not uh, easy for me for a start. So I had to start slowly, you know, to get to know people uh, over time. And I think that has been um, value at uh, partly really due to this whole onboarding experience. Uh, as Can I also engineer. ask a question? So if, if I were to join Infineon, Am mm. I expected, I mean, to, to what degree of uh, weightage do I have to expect to spend time at home, working from home, and also in office? Okay, so at the moment, unless you're essential services, uh, that means your product, you, you know, with direct product floor, production floor, you know, you work to work in lab and so forth, yeah. you can get to come to work uh, every week. So essential services, you're allowed to do so. But if not, uh, if you're not essential, we are just adhere to MOM guidelines, which means that we are able to work on alternate weeks. So this week I'm here in the office, but next week I'm working from home uh, full five days. So oh. that's how it works, it's alternate weeks, yeah. And we also try to minimize um, you know, the, the congestion of you know, human traffic. So we actually have a different timing for our shuttle bus. So it's good to hear that we have a shuttle bus that brings us to the office. And the shuttle bus... From the uh, MRT. Is, uh, from MRT, yes. So we have like early morning shuttle bus at 8.10 and then we have a, a later one, which is 10 o'clock. So different shuttle bus will then ease the traffic congestion or the human congestion that we may, may face as part of uh, the COVID measures. So okay. that's what we're trying to do as well, yes. I think there's a question uh, from Yoksan. She's asking, you know, with 2020 being very difficult year and many employees working from home, did new employees find it more difficult to integrate compared to pre-COVID? Did you observe any, you know, or of course you, you have shared your personal experience. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, good question, uh, Eileen. I would say that, uh, in fact, during uh, 2020, the whole year, we did not stop to measure or we had a past survey at check-in uh, with our new hires. And uh, in fact, the result was just released only in December. We are actually very pleased to announce that we achieved high uh, new hire experience uh, or high new hire satisfaction survey experience. And um, most of them uh, do recognize a difficult time because uh, many people were onboarded, I mean, many new employees were onboarded virtually. Uh, but uh, a lot of them accrue to uh, their collaborative uh, team and colleagues, you know, for mm. being uh, pivotal yep, in their onboarding journey. So I think um, we have also learned a lot of lessons from this whole COVID, I must say, right, that uh, Oh, so actually what we did was we had a lot of virtual uh, connect, you know, network, in, informal networking session, whether it was uh, for new hires or for trainees or for our, uh, even our interns, we can't bring people together virtually to ensure that people at least connect because a human, no matter, we are still social animals. So we need to connect, you know, or talk to yeah. someone at least, yes. And in fact, last year, we also had the EAP line, which is Employee Assistance Program that we uh, broadcast from HR perspective to everyone. Uh, so we give up to free five uh, counselors sessions by a certified psychologist or a therapist yeah. uh, if in case employees do face problem working from home or you know uh, or during COVID times they face some challenges uh, yeah. whether is it family social or so forth yeah because uh, it's really not easy I must say even uh, personally for me working from home has never been an easy journey I mean if you have kids young kids at home it can be quite distracting right so that's how it's like yeah. yep of pets okay. or noisy neighbors. <laughs> yes, or noisy yeah. neighbors or pets, yeah, right. So, uh, but I mean, that, that is a fact. And of course, management recognize that. Uh, your managers recognize that. And of course, time, sometimes your, long, your hours can be a bit longer because you're stretched into very early morning or very late, you know, kind of thing. So, but generally, people or managers are very understanding. And we try to uh, adhere or keep to the office hours, so called, to ensure that uh, our employees get their rest they needed, yep, after a long day of work. Actually, I'm, I'm also curious, so, sorry to, to keep you on this slide, but there's a question like, is there any buddy system for the new hire? And then Sean jump into it and say yes. But I'm curious, the buddy that I'm being assigned, do I have a choice? <laughs> am, I, and, 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 am I? Yeah, so do you want to talk anything about, anything about it? 
Sure. So, uh, yes, we usually, uh, from a TN perspective, when we uh, have a new hire going to onboard soon, we yep. actually prep the hiring manager to kind of evaluate amongst his teams uh, who, uh, who are the best suited body for this new colleague that's going to mm-hmm. join. And the manager should uh, uh, kind of exercise their own discretion and judgment, say, okay, I think uh, maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, Shirley will be a better person for this person or Sharon should have a body like Sean, for example, you know. So, um, because also be a personality fit and how this in- individual can support uh, the onboarding journey. Mm-hmm. So it's always on resting on the manager's discretion because uh, of course a new hire wouldn't know who is in team, right? They were like, okay, I'll leave it to anyone. Yes. Right. Yeah. And one thing about Infineo is that within HR, we're a very big department. There's about 45 of us here. We actually uh, do even cross-functional in a buddy. Like my buddy was uh, a HRBP. Instead of my own team member, yes. So that was, I thought it was quite nice. nice. Yes. Very it was really nice. nice. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. It's very yeah. Nice. It, you get to have a different perspective. And then um, I also get the instant connection that I need, you know, from a BP perspective as well. So, uh, and we became very, very, very good friends now. Like, you know, we, we, yeah. we chat a lot of times, not, not just about work, but also about other social stuff. Yep. Absolutely. Um, That's what a buddy is for, right? We can ask buddy for all the small little things. But I found us an even more interesting question. She said, she, she asked, is this buddy system? Sean, never mind. We shall ask Sharon, how long is this buddy system valid for? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, then, uh, we, okay, there's a timeline. I mean, there's not really a timeline that we recommend. Uh, usually it's three to six months. Wow, you Most of the time, then. <laughs> yes, I did six months, um, but then it's been a year for me. I still keep in touch with my buddy uh, infrequently. It's like, you know, uh, once a month, we used to catch up uh, for coffee chairs and just to check in, how are you doing, you know, yeah. uh, where well, we see pockets of improvement, you know, we also kind of understand a little bit of the, you know, the unspoken so-called uh, protocols, right, that we, that we don't get to, you know, see, sometimes you don't get experience unless you are face-to-face yeah. each other, right? So so we share quite a lot of that. So I think um, the recommendation guideline from uh, TA or from from HR will be maybe three to six months because our probation period is also uh, different across different uh, levels within the organization. I see. And Colin says, uh, once a buddy, always a buddy. Hi, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, and the buddy is, uh, I think, is this really uh, pivotal, you know, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the new hire onboarding. I think the, the journey is, I think it really makes a lot of difference. Yeah. I really like what you mentioned just now when you said work-life integration and, you know, very common we hear these words, work-life balance, right? But, mm. but you know, most organizations have already moved to integration. So integration, the key difference is, is work-life, when we say work-life balance, it's almost like an on-off switch. It's like, okay, I'm off work, I'm, I'm into my social life now, don't bother me about work. But, but now, increasingly, we are talking about integrating it. So it's not so much as a clean cut. It is like a part of your social life. So I'm so encouraged when you use that, guys. This is a forward-thinking HR, for sure. <laughs> Sometimes I, I listen to terms like this to see how, how advanced the HR is. So for sure. Anyway, by showing up, you're already a very, very <laughs> advanced <laughs> based on that. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, and um, I would say kudos to Infineon's uh, core beliefs and culture. Uh, they, they encourage us to also, um, and also mainly, you know, in BDH, I also encourage uh, us to kind of challenge status quo and be a bit more forward thinking. So the work, the term work life balance has become like a like a passe, you know, and I think work life integration is a new way to go, partly because we are also looking at a new way of work, right? Moving forward for due to COVID, you know, that has impact the whole world. And I think this is something that very uh, heartening to know that in fact Infineon ourselves are uh, devising a plan for a uh, new work, we call it new work 2021, 2021, 2021 plan. Mm-hmm. So we do not know what it will unfold, so it's going to be light, but uh, for sure, all of us in, within the organization are really looking forward to that. Yep. Okay, okay so I'll move on to next, which is the very interesting part. So uh, folks, please check out uh, our openings. Um, we have an Infidon career page. Uh, clearly, that's our job portal. Where if you just Google, you know, Infidon uh, Career Singapore, Infidon Technologies Singapore, you can see all the uh, jobs available. Today, I think I have about seventy. And as I speak, I know it's increasing. Because this morning, I received more job profile requests to approve. <laughs> so, um, bulk of our roles, uh, yes, is engineering uh, for a start. But we also do have other functions. And you can see if you scan our QR code, you'll bring you to the job, job search page and if you key in the job ID you will then be able to find the roles itself so uh, for um, 
uh, easy reading. I have given you guys uh, a categorized by the job function. So engineering being uh, as a big chunk, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then of course, we also have a supply chain logistics, which is an upcoming uh, industry and function uh, into this marketplace, right? So, uh, and we have both permanent contract managerial, supervisory, and even specialist role. So feel free to check it out. Uh, in case some of you who are interested to move to this space, like due to career switch and so forth, uh, please feel free to explore. Uh, of course, IT has been our, also a backbone of our, any, any you know, manufacturing organization. Uh, we do have a lot of roles uh, in uh, uh, IT, uh, be it programming, solution mm -hmm. design, software architecture. And in fact, uh, data scientists is an upcoming roles that we're going to publish even more uh, because we received some funding from EDB to be uh, the embark on the digital journey that we are on. So right. uh, you will see more and more roles uh, uh, for data scientists or data uh, or big data engineering position. Yep. Okay, I'm going to ask for one of our listeners. So she said she's in... Uh finance role and very keen to move into a semiconductor industry. Any corporate functions there, anywhere that she can start would be great, right? Finance. Wow. What do you, you know? Caught it. You caught it, Eileen. <laughs> so, as you can see my screen I'm now. i uh, your video, you see. I was looking at you rather than the slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... No, no, not at all. So uh, we do have some uh, positions that are open that are finance related and it's finance IT because we are on one SAP journey too. So globally, um, Infineon uh, has a procured SAP license to roll out our end-to-end -end business solution uh, leveraging our SAP. And uh, in fact, we have some of the roles are open for um, a while already to that we are looking for a finance system roll out who knows a bit of finance, um, has finance expertise or knowledge at least, but also techno-functional kind of uh, background. And um, I think if I'm not wrong, the role, uh, uh, I believe it's posted on our website, but it's not here because it was just opened up uh, only yesterday, last Friday, if I'm not wrong. Yep. So finance system role, uh, we have quite a fair bit. Uh, we have so pricing and uh, cost analysts, if you can see. Uh, mm -hmm. Even facilities, uh, sales and marketing operations, uh, again, uh, quite a fair bit of roles, uh, in fact, about 15 mm -hmm. to 20 positions, yeah. And uh, just let you know, if you do have contract roles, uh, we also provide um, quite decent or good benefits, which includes annual leave and uh, unlimited <laughs> medical reimbursement mm -hmm. <laughs> at this point in time. Yes, for our contract wow. positions, yeah. So um, so this is something that I'm quite proud of, like, you know, our we don't shortage our contract staff. We actually ensure that they do get, uh, you know, a, a fair enough coverage for medical treatment. Yeah, guys, everyone on the call, just give a reaction button. Uh. Please give them, <laughs> you know, an applause kind of reaction. Yeah, so nice. Thank you, Colin. You're the first again. <laughs> Candy, yep. thank you, William. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. very rare because normally when they're on contract hires, I, I know of organization who also demarket some areas that contract hires cannot enter. And it feels really rotten, you know. And in this day and age, we are all approaching into, you know, gig economy. You can't treat people like that, right? Yes. Because and motivation and all. Yeah, thumbs up, man. I found you are right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Job. Yeah, so um, for myself personally, because I oversee the contingent staffing program uh, in ASEAN and therefore we are also in the process of re-evaluating the benefits for our contractors to ensure they are not short-chained. And of course, clearly uh, some of the contracts can stretch up to quite a certain time. But in all fairness, we will try our best to, uh, you know, after contractual period to, you know, uh, refer the individual to the internal permanent roles if there is a hit count that's open. Exactly. Yep, exactly. yep. Yes. And uh, we, I'm very glad to tell you everybody that we have been uh, on a double-digit growth. Uh, so even mm. despite of COVID, which is a very bad time last year, mm. but um, uh, our uh, semicon or our, we as an organization has been still been growing fairly up uh, well. So globally, in fact, last year, January, we had 354 positions. We closed at 1,800 plus Rose globally. Uh, that was December wow. 31st. So wow. you can tell we are actually on a hiring hike to a large extent and it's keeping me really busy to be honest. So yeah, but but uh, hiring has not stopped, uh, you know, since I joined. So uh, please in continue to keep look out, uh, join our LinkedIn page or, you know, follow us on social media. Uh, we have yeah. Instagram as well, just to get to know a little bit more about our organization and what kind of solutions that we offer. Yep. You know, I feel so excited for everybody here who have Dowlin because they have actually jumped the queue. With so many open positions, yeah, it's true. With so many open positions, you're going to be submitting all your applications and all that and you're just a name, right? Yes. But here, you're not a name. You're a person joining the call and they can see you. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. 
That's so they can put like a, a face, you know, to the name and because of course whatever link is sometimes is a bit, yeah, uh, uh, something over, but at least then they know who I am, right? So I think that's good. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. I would encourage those who, who to connect to Sharon and, and, and Sean and please refer and say that, you know, I, I, I heard you on, um, on Zoom, on Facebook or whatever, you know, and, and you want to connect with them, okay? This is the best way to jump queue. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. So once you get connected, because um, do leverage on our networks as well. Because uh, for me, uh, I think I'm hitting about 5,000 already, to be honest. But it's really massive for wow. me. But because as a recruiter, you tend to get more, you know, networks, right? Exactly. So it, I, I think I became a lion really. Like, we call it LinkedIn yeah. Open LinkedIn. Network. <laughs> yes, open yes. Network. Yeah, but sometimes I lose track of who I have, a, 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 you know, a network or connected virtually. But it's good to keep your LinkedIn profile updated at all times. It's really like your personal branding, yeah? Yeah. That's another topic that we can speak another day, you know, if you yes, like, yeah? Yes, yes, you still got, <laughs> you're coming back for another episode to give them tips, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So I'll move on to the common mistakes when applying for a role or a job I think uh, because I've been recruiting for 25 years or 24 years to be honest um, it has been a long journey for me and coming from you know consumer electronics to semicon to software I've probably seen more than 10,000 resumes in my life and you know process a lot of good applications as well so I think um, there are some common mistakes as a job seeker uh, sometimes they tend to make because um, a lot of times you may not be of course most of us are not you know looking for a job every other day, right? So sometimes you look for a job when there's a change or restructuring uh, because some clinical decision high up there, you know, somewhere in the US or so forth, right? So, um, uh, and at, at times we do lose track of um, what are the latest uh, uh, tips in, you know, uh, looking for a role, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I, I mean, Ilya asked me to share, I think there are some good things, I, some things I actually was uh, observing and I just want to mm. share with everybody. So uh, first and foremost uh, is a resume. Why? Because um, a lot of times I've seen resumes up to 25 pages. It's almost mm. like writing a book, you know, and because the person mm. has about, you know, close to 30 years experience also, so then she, wow. she gave me a lot of stuff or whatever. Yep. And I think uh, this will then deter the chance of, you know, um, the recruiter going deeper and mm. yeah, because it's just too, too long. Yeah. And um, at times when you, when you want to write a resume, right, uh, the part is you so your resume has to have some called suspense to entice a recruiter to call you. So um, you do not need to give the full detailed part, especially the administrative part of it. You can just have to summarize it and put in some bombastic or keywords that you want to highlight. Um, of course, there's, uh, if you do Google search, there's a lot of works that you can, like, you know, like design, execute, or, uh, um, you know, uh, deliver, or end-to-end. -end. So, so some of the big keywords you can use uh, quite a fair bit, or orchestrate, for example, you know, so that you can capture the recruiter's attention and eyeballs and make sure that, oh, okay, they'll call you to clarify what is meant by this point or that point, yeah? And um, so try to keep it up to a like, three to four, three pager um even four pages is a bit long um of course i think those all right <laughs> yeah you know certain resume uh, certain recommendations in the marketplace is like management consulting resume they have like one page only which is mm -hmm. like a consultant you know portfolio mm -hmm. right that's what mm -hmm. they do and they put in key points but um uh, but of course for agents sometimes we're more concerned if it's like too brief will it you know uh well, will it, you know, uh, deter the recruiter from calling you? Uh, technically, it, it will not be. And a lot of today, um, it's not a recruiter who actually pre screen your CVs. It's, it's, it's actually the AI. Yeah. You guys are aware. So AI is artificial intelligence. You really pre screen yes. your CVs. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So when you have too much clutter in your resume, it's also very difficult for the AI to capture or for the human eyes to capture mm -hmm. it. And then, it's very disorganized. So make it very organized, very structured, uh, standard font size like 12 for area and so forth. That'd be good enough. Yep. And um, in today's space, do not, uh, you do not need to give a lot of personal data. Why? Again, there are some candidates who ask me, hey, Sharon, do I need to tell people where I live? Am I male or female? Blah, blah, blah. You know, even age. So uh, we do not encourage that. So um, really you don't need to do mm -hmm. so. Just, you know, your name and your contact details. And importantly, uh, as I mentioned here, is uh, putting your LinkedIn profile. So point 11, LinkedIn profile, just update it. Just cut the link, put it on top of resume because that's also where recruiters will log in and, and check. Yeah. And of course, um, uh, questions about, do you need to upload your certificates and testimonials? Uh, no, not at this point in time. Because uh, when we need all your information, uh, we will actually will request you, okay, Maybe do the second or third round, then we say, okay, I need to submit some of this information for you. In fact, some of the avant garde are very forward-looking uh, companies, they don't even have application form. 
everything is just by your resume and then the document reader will just pick it up and then they go down, download direct to the yeah, so-called their personal data system. Yep. So you do not need to you do not need to upload all the certificate testimonies you need. But of course, if you have received certifications, awards, mm. achievements, you can highlight in your in your uh, uh, resume or your cover page, which is ever that it is more comfortable with. So most most people will update in their resume itself. Yep. And of course, um, uh, we do have people who also ask me, uh, do I upload a photo or not? Mm. So. At this point in time, I would say uh, you don't need to, and in fact, you, I advise not to. Uh, why? Because um, it's very natural for any human to have what I call the unconscious bias. Yeah. Yep. And when you see a photo, sometimes it's really up to the individual recruiter to decide his or her feeling about how you you know you look like or whatever. So, I think it's not fair to judge you just by the photo itself. Uh, so, um, usually I would advise our job seekers you don't need to upload your photo. You can just you know, uh, in your LinkedIn attach a very professional headshot. That's good enough. And then when the recruiter wants to look, take a look at you, they just click on the link and they, they can see that. Yep. And photos also add in signs to your resume. So you also will slow down the uh, downloading speed, you know, for some ATS that is not, uh, that could not be processing so fast. Yep. ATS means uh, applicant tracking system. So most companies use ATS to date to track all their uh, applicants. Yep. And um, the other thing that uh, I would advise all of us uh, or job seekers out there is not try not to apply uh, multiple roles within the organization too many times because uh, it's really important when you look at the JD and ask yourself where is the best fitted role for you so um, of course if you have supply chain for example there's two or three supply chain very similar roles you can apply but you don't need to apply for all because um, because we do have a lot of job seekers or candidates that you know they try their luck to apply everyone and they feel that hey I may get a chance but when the recruiter who are processing the same uh, function, uh, you know, recruiting, they were like, wow, this guy applied 10 times, you know, uh, it, it, like without lo really looking at the JD and the JD are quite, maybe quite different in job nature. So we just want to make sure you, you yourself feel this is the best fit to the role that you're applying for. And um, the question you always ask is, how can I value add to this role? Right? Mm -hmm. Because value add is a key word that recruiter will ask you, hey, you got great experience, but how do you value add? How can you share oh. best practices? So just to interrupt, uh, Sharon, what you're recommending is if anyone see uh, more than one role that they are interested in, your advice would be just go for the best fit. Just just apply for one, right? Um. Okay, so you can apply, uh, see within the, the same company, you can apply yeah. for maybe... Uh, maybe three to five roles that you feel is the best fit because a lot of these roles are quite specialized in five functions or domain expertise and you know so forth right uh, maybe three is there but it's a good number uh, but some of the roles that we have like for example just now you saw my warehousing roles or contract uh, supply chain uh, more than 10 so yeah. you don't apply for everyone just selectively choose the best top three that you feel you have the best chances uh, based on the uh, JD itself because every JD will describe to you what are the key requirements and practices prerequisites that you must have in order to okay. apply for that role yep right so do so that uh, yeah three roles, uh, so let's say three yes. roles, uh you you wouldn't frown on them right i mean no no i think three to five is, is quite a reasonable number especially for the more junior ones i think like you know a fresh grad they apply like many which i can understand yeah. of course yeah but when more senior was... itself you shouldn't mm. And I'm also envisaging that maybe when they see a role and bracket contract a role that is, you know, permanent, you know, I, I can just imagine that I might put in two applications because one for contract and one for permanent. If I don't get the permanent, I don't yes. mind. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Then you should do that too. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Then the next point I move on, it will be not customizing your cover letter and resume each time you apply. Uh, right. Of course, within the same organization, like let's say you apply for Infineon, three to five roles, you can have the same cover letter, no problem. Uh, Resume-wise, uh, a lot of people are not aware, but in fact, we should be customizing it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I learned that through my career coach as well, uh, because I uh, also used to have one standard resume. But yeah. I uh, over time, when I uh, went through uh, office art placement and, and you know, services and, and speak to more and more cohort, especially recruiters, then we realized that, hey, you know, there's no resume that is one size that fits all. A lot of times you must go through the JD itself and look at the keywords that you know the 
JDI really emphasizes, and usually it appears on the first three to four job liners of the JDI itself. That means that like, the prerequisites, like you know, uh, what must the, what what kind of skills you must have in order in order to perform the role successfully, right? And then the first three to four liners, you know, are the key emphasize of the role itself. So use that and then customize your JDI and then call it out in your JDI so that in your uh, resume so that yeah. the recruiters can identify. And, oh yes, straight away they can. Do it, and for AI as well. AI will also be putting that as well because AI will capture that. Um, it's not really keywords in, in short, but they will have the logical processing by mm. going through your. They like they scan through your resume, then they'll they'll kind of be able to figure out okay what this person really does. Is this a sales and sales guy? Is it operations guy? Is this a HR person and so forth? Yep. So customize your resume is important, and of course, uh, you don't need to have customized very you know varied ways, but. You know, some of them can be shorter. Some of them you can call different things that you think you uh, will helps you to you know attract the eyeballs of recruiters itself. Yep. And next point will be using tables. Uh, please don't use tables in resumes uh, because uh, when you use tables, a lot of AI that that is present that is pre, uh, embedded in the ATS, which is the applicant tracking system, will not be able to read your CV very well. Yep. So yes, so you will get <laughs> you will hit a like a, a like a technical bug like you know in a way. And then the AI should actually. So what AI does is that they will actually bring up. Okay, they'll do all the pre-screening for one hundred resumes, and they'll bring it up. You know,、uh, as a top choice candidate for the recruiters to go through. So recruiters will tend to go through the top ten choices or top ten percent choices, depending on how the AI is configured. You know, in the、uh, program, in the ATS itself. So if you use tables, then usually even you have the keywords that you're looking, they are looking for, but、uh, it will be on the top. Bottom pages, lah. So that's something that you should not、uh, be using for. Uh, um, you should you should embed into, into your、uh, resume. You shouldn't have done that, lah. Yep. And then of course,、okay. uh, I also see people putting wrong company name when you apply or you address the wrong person. Uh, maybe you know, like I'm the person in charge. You can't share when you 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 put uh Shalin, for example. Then you like he is the wrong person. So for recruiter, they were like, okay, this person is really not very、I、careful. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So you reflect. Yeah. So the first impression seems like not there. How could、yeah. you? You know. Yeah. So, um, so I think we uh, of course, you know, um, the respect is two-way traffic, right? So if respect, you know, every time you, uh, the effort that you put in to apply for the role, I think the recruiters respect that, and of course, we also respect that. At the same time, we also want to give you the time and respect to you to you for your application status. So we try our best to update the ATS ASAP、uh, whenever we can because partly there's really a lot of. Applicants at times, and we do have enough time to you know go through every. I mean, we'll go through every single one, but times that that will take about sometimes even up to two or three weeks, because some of the ATS is quite slow in the marketplace. It takes、mm-hmm. a long time to download the resume one by one. Yep.、Uh, okay, so I also cover LinkedIn profiles. LinkedIn profile is a big topic.、Uh, it's by itself a topic that、uh, I can. We are happy to share next time round、uh, if you have time. But surely,、uh, it's very important because it's about your personal branding. And some of you may not be aware there's actually personal branding index that you can calculate <laughs> in Google. So,、um, but、indeed. just. Yes, indeed, it is. Yeah. So this is something that、uh, some of us like because I'm as an industry person, I I I I know. Uh, she some some people some recruiters do check out, you know, your branding and uh in that also、yeah. your social media footprint as well. You know what what you covers, and in some background checks as well, they also they also cover uh social media checks too. Yeah. So just make sure that your social your private life is, uh, you know, a private to yourself and not to to open. Uh, sometimes yeah. Or rather, co coherent. Ah,、uh. coherent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Coherent or align or、authentic. align. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's a question from Yoksan. Uh, Sharon. With、sure. AI, how strict in in Finion with uh in terms of finding people with you know experience in similar roles. <laughs> If you can.、Mm. <laughs> Okay, so、um, at this part in time, we、uh, Infineon's、uh, ATS is a German software.、Mm-hmm. We、uh, do not have AI yet, so、uh, that means we are still using、uh, human screening. Lah, so all our recruiters will have to go through the resumes one by one, and it is a, a must do for recruiters to go through every single one. So you can imagine for some of the roles that we have,、um, the applications up to a hundred, for example. I can imagine. Yeah, and I had one is three hundred forty nine. So I'm, I'm really, really. Those were the days I hire intern to take highlighter and just highlight、yes. for me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, in Finnian, we are we want to support uh local employment. So we are trying also we are trying to give priorities to Singaporeans or PRs as far as we can, and um. 
if you really cannot find Singaporeans or PR through my careers future or through Infinite Career Portal, then we will really consider then consider foreign, but foreign talent. But we are trying to minimize that because um, uh, this is our mandate, like, you know, and it's a, yeah. something that our MD has, has especially requested, which and all of us Singaporeans, in, uh, man, I mean, 80% or 90% of mm. Infinite employees are Singaporeans. So the AI screening uh, is still not there yet, but I would say that we, uh, it's still human screening. And you're right to say that. Um, Recruiters will go through what I call a job brief analysis with all our hiring managers. Yeah. Where hiring managers will specify clearly um, what, what are the key factors they're looking for in the profile, the role. And this is also where influence uh, recruiters will do uh, kind of influence hiring managers and say that, hey, you know, we don't have the proper unicorn there. There's no perfect candidate. If the candidate hits about, you know, 60-70%, you should request for an interview because uh, there's a huge role for talent. Despite even COVID, yeah, there's a huge role for talent. That's for sure. Especially in our industry. So um, this is something that we will try our best to influence and convince the hiring manager to interview the individual, even though the person may not be 80, hitting 80%, but 60 to 70% is good enough. So, um, and of course, like with AI, data science, data engineering, you know, data, big data sets and data modeling, this kind of technical skills that are very new in the last uh, mm. two years, um, we don't have the kind of expectations that, oh, you should be have having 10 years experience and no, it's not. Huh? So that's reality. So if someone have one to two years experience, whether in research or whether it's in uh, academic field or whether it's a hands-on in semiconductor industry or even a software industry for a start, we are happy to take it on to, you know, uh, have a look. And of course, um, 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 I think it's important that we explore uh, what's out there in the marketplace. So this is something that uh, I encourage you not to be um, afraid uh, to take the first step out and uh, go for it, uh, especially for female job applicants. Uh, it's quite different for me applicant. That's something I also learned about is that for a female job applicant, they will tend to read the JD carefully and then they say, okay, I must fulfill oh, I the 15, I must fulfill 15. Then I will yeah. apply for the job or 14 and I can apply for the job, right? And the one-liner, then they will like, oh, I think I'm not, I'm not suitable. So that is a wrong mindset. Uh. Whereas for a male, a job applicant, you'll look at it, okay, out of 50, I can fulfill five, I'm very fitted for the job, I'll apply for the job, <laughs> I'm very qualified, they'll just apply. Yeah. So this, it, one, this is human nature. It's human yes, nature. this is just a difference agenda. I noticed in the agenda, yes. And I encourage uh, a lot of uh, female candidates out there, especially in the tech space or STEM, you know, uh, industry, please, uh, uh, you know, master the courage to take the first step out. And in today's world, uh, truly, we have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right, so uh, we call it the faith, right? and it's really not easy because there's a lot of internal struggle for any human, for any of us. No matter how seasoned, how senior, you know, how uh, smart you are, there's still always there could always be some internal struggles when you have to go out there and you know start looking for a new job. So, yeah. um, but but it is the first step that you have to take, uh, and once you take that first step, I think a lot of times it'll be a lot easier when you uh, are on the journey, and then you see that hey, this support is coming very naturally internally. So do do my, do what I call uh you know breathe deeply and go for it. Don't don't be um you know uh, impeded by your own fears. Yeah. So just okay. just face it. Yep. Okay, I'm rushing you a bit because we are coming to the end of the hour. But yes. but, but you have quiz question where they can earn a special special heart, and we're gonna yes. cover all that in the next episode. I know you have a lot more. And remember, I said when you get Sharon started, she. <laughs> yes, <that>. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so in that case, I will keep this for next week. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please, 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 for the next episode. But more, what's more important is the current open positions, and also sure. okay. What quick quiz question do you have? So guys, get ready to type your answer in the chat, please. All right. Okay. okay. Sharon, ask. All right. So the first question I have is: uh, When uh, the Infineon set foot in Singapore? Which year is it? <laughs> okay, go ahead and type in the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Very fast, very fast. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I'll stop sharing because I, I want to see the screen yeah, actually. Yeah, if you, you don't mind. Stop there. Please stop there. Please yeah, stop. yeah. Okay, so how do I stop sharing? You can, uh, you can decide. Wow, we've got quite a few answers already. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so who are the first? Uh, okay. is, it, is it MC Lim? Yeah, MC the first. The first. MC the first. Okay, so uh, MC, congratulations. You get this, <laughs> which is a very nice uh, sustainable cup uh, that only new hires 
uh, you know, gotten. And if you are willing to come by my office, uh, coffee is on me as well. <laughs> okay. You see, so, guys, this is the best way to jump queue, right? You don't have to wait for what AI. No, this is human, human. Fantastic. Okay. Second, okay. second question, uh, Sharon. Second sure. Question. Okay. So uh, the second question is. Um, can you name me one of the line of business Infineon has? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Very fast, very fast. So, okay. okay. The is it your... first one to answer. <laughs> I don't know how fast your type. Uh. You're, you're really fantastic. Colin was the first to say automotive. Yoksan say automotive. William say automotive. I think Colin, Colin was the first to, okay. to type that. Yeah. All right. Just so my feet. Split second, I think. Yes. So congratulations, Colin. This is the card that you get as well. So thank you so much for answering. Automotive, yes, you're number one, in fact, is that. So if you go into your cars, you may find our parts somewhere around <laughs> hidden in your seats or so forth. Yeah. Okay. Then the third question is um get ready, well, guys. Wait, get ready, yeah. Huh? Get ready. Okay. Those who want no need to type, huh? <laughs> no, like... <laughs> so what was yeah. Infineon formerly known as? Oh, Candice. Candice was the first to say Siemens. Yes, yeah, Siemens components. Actually, we were the first to be known as the Siemens components were uh, the first, um, when we first started, uh, when we were in a factory, factory somewhere at Galang Way, if I'm not wrong. It's a very old one. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, so, um, Ilya, what we can do is that you will maybe connect me with the three winners and then they can, uh, if they like, they can come to, you know, my actually, office. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll say, guys, you know, uh, Edwin, you know, Edwin, Colin, I think, um, who did, who's that? Candice and there's, there's another one, Yoksan, is it? Yoksan. Yoksan, yep. Oh, no, MC, MC, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, MC, please connect. In fact, all of you should connect directly with to Sharon. Sharon. Okay, good. And those who want the cup, please, uh, you know, link up with her and then have your, have your not virtual coffee, but real coffee. Really, how rare is this, right? This is very rare. What a nice way to start your week. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a nice way to kick up, you know, the, the yeah. kickstart the uh, Lunar New Year. So um, I really appreciate everyone spending the one hour with this. I mean, yeah. it's an investment and uh, it's the first time that I'm feeling quite different because I told Eileen that yeah, it, it was such a privilege yeah like you know to be part of this um a journey with all of you and uh just just take it that you know just don't, don't worry that you are not alone yeah i mean this is a little bit of encouraging work for all of you and i um, take this time to you know wish everybody again you know see on tatia new tea chong tian new 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 drive tian kun sing halloween okay so thank you so much oh everyone so many greetings that's good and uh, don't lose heart for those of you who have been so active do dial in for the next episode because we, we promise you there's going to be some more goodies to take away. All right. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. So, uh, Elaine, we'll keep in touch and everybody have a great week here and great year here, okay? Awesome. Yay. Keep it going. Wonderful. Keep fighting. Thank you. Yes, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Thanks, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, for your thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.